Hey guys, Ronnie here, showing off how I made my simple retro liquid simulation video. I want to say I'm only making this because I've had a few people ask how I did, which I'm kind of surprised by and also very happy about. When I uploaded that video, I didn't think it was anything special and I certainly still don't, but I'm very pleased that people enjoyed it and people want to know how to make it. I should say that this is by no means a comprehensive liquid simulation guide. There's plenty of those out there that will do it much better than I do, but for those that want to know how I made that exact video, I'm more than happy to show you, so let's hop into Blender. And let's start with the usual things. Let's hop over to Cycles Render, get rid of the lamp, and let's head over to the World tab and turn the color to complete black. So I'm going to select the camera, press Alt and R and Alt and G to reset it, then press R and X and then 90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Move it back on the y-axis and I'm going to hit 0 on the number pad to go into camera view. So let's scale the cube up a little bit and then let's scale it on the x-axis like so. With that selected, let's name it Domain and let's press Shift and D to copy it and name this one Domain underscore Look. Now in the meantime, let's hide the original domain. Press the little eyeball and the camera. We don't need it right now. And then with the domain look selected, I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. Select the little face select right here. And then select the face closest to the camera. And then press X and only faces. Then I'm going to press A to select everything. Head over to the shading and flip direction. So this is what we've got so far. I'm going to hop out of editing mode by pressing tab again. And then let's head over to the material view. Actually, no, sorry. Let's head over to the modifier tab. Let's add in a wireframe modifier and then a subdivision surface. We're going to add a grid here. So let's move the subdivision up and then let's select simple and then bump this up to three. Make sure your render and your view are the same thing. Otherwise, if you, you know, render with a different uh, number there, it will look completely different. So we're on three for both. Then I'm going to cut down the wireframe. I'm going to divide it by, let's say four, because it's a little thick. It's still a little thick. So let's do it divided by two. And that's good. So I'm going to select my material tab, use nodes. And let's select the corner here and drag up to create a new window. I want to keep the original one here because we're going to need that for the simulation part. Select that and do node editor and then zoom in so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to press X to get rid of the Diffuse tab, Shift and A, and then search and type in Emission. Plug that in. Shift A, search, type in Black Body so we can color by temperature. And just bump that up to 12,000, which is a nice kind of blue glow, but it's still white. So I'm going to hit Rendered. Let's see what we're working with here. Shift and B. And then I'm going to just select the camera just so we only render what the camera sees. So far, so good. I'm going to bump the emission up to 1.2, and I'll explain why later. I'm going to go to File, User Preferences, head over from Interface to Add-ons, go to Add Mesh, and make sure you select Extra Objects right here. So with that selected, we're going to close that out, and then we're going to press Shift and A, and then on Mesh, we're going to scroll down to Torus Objects and Torus Not. There we go. I'm going to scale that down by pressing S. And that's a good size. I'm going to press 5 to get an orthographic view here. And I'm just going to move this up to about the top. That's good. Hit 0 again to go back into camera view. I'm going to head over to the modifiers, add a subdivision surface. And just let's hit 2 on that and then apply. I'm going to hit smooth. And then I'm going to jump over to the physics tab. Select Fluid, type Fluid, and that's it. We're done with the Taurus Knot, so I'm going to hit the eyeball and the camera, and we're going to bring the domain back in. And on the domain, we're going to hit Fluid, and we're going to add the domain type. So as you can see here, we have an awful shape. Um, under Viewport Display, I'm just going to go Final. So as you can see, we have a rough, rough shape of the Taurus Knot. I'm going to hit Smooth on that. So what you need to do is adjust the final resolution and this just affects how detailed it is basically. For my video that I uploaded I was at 500 as you can see that really bumps up the required memory and it takes a long time to render. So for this tutorial I'll, I'll render out I'll do 300. The trade-off here is you know better quality but it takes much longer to bake 
So whatever your computer can support, just try and do that. And if you have the free time, then go for it just to sit around and wait. So I'll hit 300. I'll tap bake and I'm going to go, I don't know, play 3DS or something. And then we'll see what happens when it's done. All right. I'm back from playing some Monster Hunter and let's see, let's see what we've got. All right. So looking pretty good. Um, very laggy, but <laughs> it's looking good nonetheless. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the material now. So I'll head over to the material tab, press plus, and let's see what we've got right now. All right. So let's disconnect that. I'm going to copy the emission and I'm going to add a mix shader. I'm going to set one to blue, one to pink. I'm going to add a Fresnel node. And if you don't know a Fresnel node, it basically colors along the, I guess, edges of the mesh. So you can mess around with this to get what you want. Maybe it's to 1.2. And I'm going to turn the emission on the pink up to like 4. So we can just kind of skip around here and see what that gives us. Maybe 5. Let's do 1.2. Let's go 1.3. We can turn the emission on that up maybe up to 10. Alright, something like that looks good. Alright. So that's basically it as far as that goes. Now we're going to hop on over and start compositing. So I'm going to give this a quick render. And I'll keep the settings like this. Of course, you might want to go up to 100%, but for this, I'll just keep it at 50%. And you don't re you don't really need to mess with the sampling since everything is emission based. You don't you're not going to get any fireflies, or at least you shouldn't. So I'll hit render, and then we'll head into the compositor. Okay. So I'll hit right here and use nodes. Drag this out. Add a lens distortion. 0 0.02 for the distortion. As you can see, that's just kind of um, like a fisheye lens effect, sort of. And I'll click fit so it fits the screen. Looking good. Dispersion. Let's do 0 0.05. Oh, too much. 0 0.005. Maybe I can go up a little bit more on that. Times it by two. That looks okay for what we're going for. That kind of retro look. I'll add a glare. Fog glow, high, change the threshold to let's try 0.8, let's go 0.5. Okay, and the reason I put the emission on this earlier on the grid to 1.2 is so we would get a little bit more, more to work with for the glare, so that kind of glows as well. That looks good, and I'll add another glare, and I'll, I'll use the uh, simple star. Let's turn the threshold up. About 0.8. I like the look of that. So yeah, that's basically the compositing. So when it would come to animation, you would just select your output, hit animation, render your frames, and then throw it back into Blender or into your favorite video editing software. Of course, you would want to go to 100% here if you didn't already do so. So that's the basis of it, guys. Um, if that's all you wanted to see, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you want to stick around, I was kind of messing around with some alternatives, or at least one alternative. So if you want to see how I did that and got kind of a funky effect, we're going to start that right now. So the difference is I'm going to click on the domain look and I'm going to get rid of the modifiers on it. And then I'm going to press tab, U, reset to give it some UVs. So let's create a new window here, open the UV map and look at our material actually we'll have to head over to the material here and add a mix shader add a glossy shader I'm gonna set the glossy all the way white and roughness of zero plug that in actually let's switch these then I'm going to add in an image texture and I in the description I have a link to a a square grid I made if you want to grab that all right, so we've got the mask in here. I'm going to plug it in and then we're going to over here. I'm going to press A to make sure everything is selected and press S2. 
S2, S2, that's, yeah, that's good. Let me hit rendered. And so I have this like interesting, like reflection thing going on, which I thought was kind of neat. So what I want to do is I'm just going to render this out and see what it looks like, because I honestly have no idea. But first, let's do a test render just to make sure the effects aren't too strong, since there is more light to work with. All right, yeah, that is a bit strong. So I'm going to turn the threshold up just a tad on everything. Maybe 0.8. All right, that's better. So yeah, I don't know what this looks like rendered. I'm going to render it out and I'll throw it at the end of this video. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. As for me, I'm currently working on a bunch of like physics simulation videos in this style. So I'm kind of excited to get that out. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. I'd love to answer them. That's why I'm here and I'll see you next time.